And the Lord put a word on my heart today for this gathering this evening, and it's found in Psalm 126. And it's a psalm that is written by a psalmist after a miracle has taken place, a miracle. He begins by saying, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. In other words, we were taken captive as the nation of Israel was when they dealt unfaithfully with the things of God and they were taken by a, a nation that was sent by God. They were drawn physically and spiritually in some sense into captivity. And the situation looks so hopeless that when you go to the end of the Psalm, the only thing that they had really was a weeping heart and a promise that was still tucked in the midst of that weeping, a promise of, of God's faithfulness, God's deliverance, God's power to set free. That's all they had was a weeping heart. And there's, I'm, there's so many prayer requests coming in tonight where that's all that you have. You have a weeping heart and you have just a small promise still left at the center of it, that God will help you, God will be faithful to you, although you don't see any way out. You don't know how you're ever gonna get free from the loneliness, from the, the heartache of a lost child, from the depression of wondering how you're going to feed your children, from a sense like God has left you and you don't even know where he is, you don't feel his presence any longer. From an overwhelming sense of hopelessness that all is lost and you're here though tonight on this website. You've, you've come in and somehow you found out about us, no matter where you are from around the world, and there are many like this tonight, you found out about this website and you've come in to pray and all you have is a weeping heart and a, a shred of a promise left in the middle of it from God that somehow God will be faithful. But you don't see a way, you don't know how it's going to happen. You've, you've been counseled by friends. You've tried to encourage your own heart. You've even gone through programs in some case, and nothing has helped. The captivity is just as deep as it always has been, and in some cases you feel it's even deeper. You're never going to get out. But suddenly, the writer of the Psalm says, suddenly, suddenly a decree was made. We know the history, exactly how it did happen. God raised up a secular leader to write a decree, to let the people of God go home and to rebuild their testimony again. And it was unforeseen. Nobody, nobody saw it coming. They'd been weeping for so long, they didn't think that freedom was a possibility. But God foreordained and moved on the heart of a heathen king to write a decree. And the decree said, whoever wants to can get up and go home. And not only will I let you go home, but you can have the resources that are needed to rebuild the testimony that, that has fallen in and through your lives and through yourselves corporately as a, as a people. And the psalmist says, when it happened, we were like those that dreamed, like Peter when he was imprisoned for the testimony of Christ. And an angel came and hit him on the side and said, get up, put on your coat, put on your shoes, follow me. The gates began to open. Nobody was there opening them, but they began to open. I'm sure angels were there. Peter, Peter couldn't see them. And the scripture says he thought he was dreaming. He thought he was hallucinating. Is this, and suddenly finds himself free. And how did it happen? Well, people were praying in a prayer meeting and they were saying, God set Peter free. Help him, Lord. And, and, and at that moment, I don't know how he was feeling and he might have been depressed himself. I don't know. I just know he was sleeping and he was in a very, very difficult place. But there were some other people who were not sleeping who were praying. And when they began to pray, God began to move heaven and earth Angels came down, smote him on the side, and I'm believing God for that tonight, that somehow you're going to have a visitation of God in the midst of your situation. However, God chooses to do that, and he'll do with you exactly what he did with Peter. Get up, put on your garment, put on your shoes, and start walking with me. I'm taking you out of here, and I'm taking you into a place of freedom. Then the psalmist says, our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. You see, what's going to happen is God's going to bring you into a, a fellowship. God's going to do something in your life where all you can do is rejoice. All you can do is praise him. All you can do is say, God, thank you for doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. You lifted me out of this horrible pit. 
You set my feet upon a rock. You put a new song in my mouth, even praise to God. And many will see it and begin to fear and begin to trust in God. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. He goes on to say, the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. In other words, God will take us in our weakness and do something through his son, Jesus Christ, in our lives that is so powerful. You see, on your part, all he asks you to do is just get up. Just get up and start walking. The gates start to open. The way starts to become clear. The victory starts to become evident. The, the scripture says Peter didn't believe what was happening around him. It, it, his cry, perhaps as he was led into that prison and the cries of others praying for a miracle of God was answered. And it happened so suddenly and it happened so supernaturally that all he could do was just get up and follow. Have you, have you ever been in a place like that where you know people listening tonight and those that are online you're, you're, most of you are not novices to the kingdom of God. You know what God can do. You, you know what he did for you in the past. And you know he's able to do it again in an even deeper way. So our prayer for you tonight, those that are, and, and there's so many hundreds, if not thousands of people that are just lying in these places of hopelessness and despair, thinking you're never going to get out. You not only are you going to get out, but God is going to make you a testimony of who he is to this generation that we are now living in. The psalmist says, makes a promise. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, in other words, though you have been led of your circumstance into this place of weeping, but yet in your heart you still believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of those who seriously and sincerely seek him. You've, you've come in tonight to pray. You have nothing left but a cry out to God. There's nothing left. But when I read the scripture, I see time and again that when somebody finally gets to the place where they just cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. When they begin to cry out, he stops the whole journey and says, who is that that just cried out to me? Bring that person to me. And when he brings you to himself, he says, tell me, what do you want me to do for you? And you begin to tell God, I want you to do for me what I can't do for myself. I want you to help me to see again a future for my life and for my family. I want you to give me strength to get up and walk because I can't walk in my own strength any longer. And the psalmist says, whoever goes forth weeping but still bears that seed in their heart, that promise that God has tucked in there, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him. It means shall doubtless come back with the fruit of that promise, having been made known. I've been young, David said, and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. The Lord is going to give you a song tonight. The Lord is going to give you a testimony tonight. The Lord is going to give you light in your eye tonight. He is not going to abandon you. He's not going to forsake you. A nursing mother, he said to the prophet Isaiah, can forget her child as possible, but I cannot forget you. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. When Christ went to the cross of Calvary, your, your name was engraved on his hands and he's not about to forget you. He's not about to abandon you or leave you where you are. I want you as we pray tonight to just get up. Just get up by faith. Get up by faith and say, we will get through the heartache of the loss of our child. Get up tonight and say, I will stand again. God will provide the strength I need and the provision for my children and for my family. Get up tonight in Louisiana and say, I am going to get over this bondage to alcohol and I am going to go back into the presence of God with a song that's not in, produced by a foreign substance. It is birthed in my heart by the Spirit of Almighty God. I'm going to get up out of my depression. 
I need healing and God is going to heal me. God is going to give me a reason to live. God's going to give me a purpose to live. God's going to put something of his strength inside my life. And my song and my testimony will be about him. The psalmist says, the nations around about us will say, the Lord has done great things for them because people who know you know you couldn't get out on your own. Only God could have done this. Only God could have done this. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.